Okay, folks, um, this could very well end up being the final installment uh, of this particular video series. Uh, I give it about a 20% chance that we're going to die, but a 30% chance that the car is not going to work. Um, another 30% chance that there will be you know, something dreadful that I can't figure out go wrong, and another 20% chance is that you guys will be able to blame me for everything that ever goes wrong in the world again. Now, let's go have a look and see what we've got. So, up, for, up front on a uh, entirely uh, substandard battery bracket, we have six of these 38 volt hi hybrid bus batteries in a completely unknown uh, state of charge and condition. They might put out power, they might not. Uh, you know, only the throttle pedal will tell. They are secured into the substandard battery tray by means of a um, FIA approved uh, cargo strap that I bought in my local supermarket for five bucks. Um, motor cooling is being provided uh, by this coolant pump that is uh, securely cable tied to a bracket on the car and wired up carefully with some terminal block. Um, we've got our hoses going down the back. Hopefully you'll be able to see all that. And our high voltage cabling is also conduited um, and coming up. And we are getting ready to connect them to this thing, which is the most hack-ass um, contactor box that I've ever made, and I've made a few. Uh, so all of this is going to be securely cable tied on top of the battery secured to my cargo strap. Um, once we have all that in, uh, we're then going to connect all the battery straps up, um, load the parameters into the inverter, and pump about 250 volts into this thing and see if we can go, dri go driving. So, um, yeah, do stay, ch stay tuned because that may or may not happen. Oh, we're on now, all right. <sighs> okay. So welcome to the next episode of How Not to Wire Up Your EV. No, seriously, don't, because this, this won't end well. Keep doing it this way. <laughs> the way we're taking every possible precaution by having a fuse in here, because, uh, <clears throat> like I say, I think probably due to the rain, I've increased the probability of death to thirty percent. So, just to keep the forecast updated. <sighs> so, although we are crazy, we're not insane. So the first thing we're going to do before we power up anything here is check that both contactors are in fact open, not unknown for them to be welded. So we're going to check that they're both open. Open, open, that one is, oh yeah that one's got the pre-charge, 22 ohms, perfect. Check our fuse is good, our fuse is good. So. Next thing, I'm going to turn on the key and check that this contactor closes. I think I heard the nice shake from mm -hmm. the Gillivac contactor. Pumps on, anyway. Yep, yeah, that one's closed, and this one should still be open. And it is. Woohoo. Okay. Talk to the inverter. And is the inverter talking to me? Yes, it is. And we are reading zero volts, and we are in up mode, and we're all set to put some power on here. Now, 
What we want to do is do a power supply test. So in order to do that, we are going to need to so there's UDC main, UDC max, UDC SW. I'm going to set it at set UDC SW to 40 volts. So what this means is that once the DC bus reaches 40 volts, the inverter should command uh, the main contactor to close. We're going to save that. And has that been saved? Yes, it has. We've got a CRC. Okay. So next thing is power supply. Power is on. So now we go and see if the inverter has registered voltage. Yes, we have 42 volts. So now if we turn the key to start. Oh, there it is. There's our contactor just clicked. And we should be in off mode run. And we are in off mode run. Okay, well, uh, I kind of forgot that we now have a gear selector and it was in neutral. So I'm pushing the pedal and nothing happens. But now if we push the pedal, we move. Woohoo. So, our crazy contactor box is working and our inverter is controlling the main contactor, which is a first for us with uh, this particular situation. So, okay, you've all seen that before, so uh, let's not bore everyone with that and let's get some high voltage. Yes. Rather than take the conservative approach and uh, you know go with a lower voltage, uh, we've just decided we're going to go for maximum voltage straight away. That way, we increase the uh, chances of going viral uh, with our first test drive, which of course is the the aim of any good YouTube channel. And there's no chance whatsoever of those metal bolts that I have coming to the bottom of the box. Um, so, uh, you know, just to, now, um, oh god, I really don't like that movement, but anyway, uh, right, need another screw. Now you will note, I'm very safety conscious, and that I'm not putting a lock washer on the last one, so that when we're struggling to, uh, fight the, fl the flames, we'll be able to, uh, disconnect this thing without the resistance of a lock washer in the way. Because who wants a lock washer in the way, right? I like the way, Dave, you're filming me on the last connection of the high voltage <laughs> battery and you're keeping a respectable distance behind the bonnet. Still here. Probably a good idea. Yeah. Easily know this was the last connection to make before we go driving. There's the impact. You wouldn't want to be tightening these to a specific torque or something. That would be stupid. There we go, that's more than enough torque. Alright, let's get a multimeter. Let's see. We got a HV battery or not. <sighs> this is scary. So the red is the negative and the black is the positive. Thank you, Dave. Oh yeah, we got a hot one. Got 232 volts. So I really want to do this. Maybe not. This is the part, Dave, that uh, you might need the garden hose. Okay, that's not a good sign. Contactors playing up again. Closed. Ooh, look at that. Smooth as silk. Okay. 
That works. Try your reverse. Try your reverse. Here comes reverse. Reverse works. Okay, first roll of the Tesla powered E31. As I would like to reiterate, if this is my last transmission, the car goes to Dave. Selecting reverse. Aim for the Subaru. Did I just drive over something? No. Couldn't break for it. You need a little bit more boost in there because the voltage is lower. But. Okay, so just had to do a few parameter tweaks because the original high voltage parameters were set for 360 volts and we're at about 230 now. So uh, we just cranked up the boost a little bit. Um, and so we should be able to drive forwards. The front brakes are really finding. Things badly. Well, I'm going to give her a little more boost, a little bit of hesitancy at takeoff. So let's go for 2,500. Now, bad mistake there would be to put 25,000 in there, and then we'll be through the through the uh, wall. I got myself a cup of tea. It's kind of good news, bad news story. Good news is the Panzer rolls. Good news is we're still al alive. Bad news is we've managed to kill the uh, contactor and there's some noise. We have also managed to kill the uh, ULN uh, 2003 uh, relay driver chip in the uh, logic board. So this is why we test first. Okay, so we will be able to manually pre-charge and uh, do some more driving around, uh, but we're going to need to upgrade the uh, contactor driver circuit. And I'm thinking by upgrade, I mean some big ass MOSFET in there. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so we've just got our first PCB mod that we need to do. But other than that, the car is moving. Uh, it's very smooth um, and we will be back soon with some driving, a little bit more than we did to, to, to today. Uh, so hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, subscribe, share and visit those links in the description for my Patreon uh, campaign. And we will see you in the next video. Uh, don't do anything crazy. Have a nice cup of tea and um, happy Contact or driving? Oh, I needed that.